Okay, we have one last section in this unit and it's called calorimetry. And the term calorimetry means measuring heat. So what we're going to do in this vodcast is go over how we measure heat transfers within a system. And these are all going to be physical transfers. So let's say for example we had a beaker of water at 25 degrees Celsius and we could let's just say it's a hundred grams of water what we're gonna do is calculate what would happen if we took say a 50 gram piece of aluminum at 90 degrees Celsius and put it in the water and we could calculate a number of things we could calculate what the final temperature would be we could calculate what the specific heat of the aluminum would be etc so the key to these calculations is understanding that if we could calculate the amount of heat transferred with the aluminum, that's going to equal to the amount of heat transferred by the water. In other words, we said before that heat always transfers from the hot object to the cold object. So the aluminum is going to cool down, the water is going to warm up, until they reach the same temperature and then they'll reach what we call an equilibrium. So any heat that transfers out of the aluminum has to transfer into the water. So we can calculate that heat transferred from one and then we automatically know the heat for the other one. And then we're simply going to solve for the variable that we're trying to find. One thing that we'll need are specific heats of various compounds. And these are typically given in a chart. And we've talked about specific heats before. Uh, so this is just to illustrate that specific heats of each compound are different. OK, before we start doing the calculations, let's take a look at uh, an example problem. You've got a 100 gram sample of water at 90 degrees Celsius and a 100 gram sample of water at 10 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the water is going to be what? Now since it's the same mass and the same compound, that temperature is simply going to be the mean or the middle between 90 and 10. And if you were to do that, you would calculate or you would find out that it's 50 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, if you had a 100 gram sample of water at 90 degrees Celsius and you had a 500 gram sample of water at 10 degrees Celsius, then you know since you have a much larger mass of water at the cooler temperature, that that temperature is going to be closer to 10 degrees Celsius as opposed to right at 50 degrees Celsius. And we're going to go over how we would calculate that 23 degrees Celsius. This next slide shows, let's say we have a styrofoam cup with 50 grams of water in it. So we have our styrofoam cup, 50 grams of water, 10 degrees Celsius, and we added a 50 gram iron ball at 90 degrees Celsius. So in the first slide when we were talking about heat transfers, what we're going to do is calculate what that heat transfer is going to be. Now we already know that it's going to be between 10 and 50 degrees Celsius because we know that water has a much higher specific heat than the iron so it's going to take a considerable amount of iron to raise the temperature of that water. So anyway, let's go over how we would do this sort of calculation. First thing I want to illustrate here is what we call a co coffee cup calorimeter. And you're going to use one of these in our lab. Basically what it is, is it's a coffee cup with a lid with a thermometer in the solution to measure your temperature changes. The idea is you want a fairly thermal resistant container to have this process take place in. Now obviously this is not completely sealed off from the environment, but it gives us a good estimation of what these values will be. So let's take a look at our problem. We've got a styrofoam cup, so I'm going to put cup and iron over here. So we've got, a, so we've got 50 grams of water in our cup. Water has 
specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and it's at 10 degrees Celsius, and we're going to add a 50 gram iron ball at 90 degrees Celsius. So over here, I'm going to put 50 grams. Now we need to know what the specific heat of iron is. From our chart on the second slide, we know that it's 0.45. Here, I need to rewrite this. So we have our 50 grams of iron, specific heat 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius, and it's at 90 degrees. So we don't know our final temperature of the water, and we don't know our final temperature of the iron ball. And we apparently don't know the Q, nor do we know the Q there. So the way we want to solve for this problem, if you remember, our Q values are going to be the same, because the amount of heat that leaves the iron ball is going to be the same amount of heat that enters the cup of water. So if these two values are the same, what we can do is set up our equation, 50 grams of water times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times Tf minus 10, and we can set that equal to our 50 grams of the iron ball, 0.45, and I'm not going to write the units to save space, Tf minus 90. Now the only thing, the only trick here is remembering when we have heat leave a system, and this is a physical system, that's exothermic. So our sign for Q is going to be negative. So we would need to put a negative sign in front of that equation. The heat is entering the water, so that's endothermic, so that's a positive. Now you need to make sure that you do that because that negative sign and our minus sign here are obviously going to interact. If you were to leave that out, we would have a wrong value. So what you want to do here is solve for Tf. Now you can go through the math and do that. I don't have enough room on this slide, but as we do practice problems, we'll go through some of those calculations. But what you're going to do here is solve for Tf, and you should get what we had in our previous slide, which was 18 degrees Celsius. So the key to these problems is realizing that the Q of one value is equal to the Q of the other value. In other words, if you're putting some sort of object into water, those Q values, in other words, the heat transferred from one to the other is going to be the same. So we have MC delta T of the object is equal to MC delta T of the water. So we can simply set those equations equal to one another and solve for our unknown. On the other hand, let's say you can calculate the Q for one. Let's say you knew that final temperature, so you knew MC delta T, and you could find that value, and let's just say, I don't know, let's just say it's 100 joules. Then what you could do is say, all right, well then, 100 joules, if it's transferred into that, had to be transferred out of the other object, so you could set your other Q value to 100 and then solve for whatever you need to solve for. So basically what this comes down to is Q is equal to MC delta T for two systems, the object and the water. And you simply need to put that together to solve for your unknown. Okay, as usual, this might seem a little bit complicated, but as you do these problems using that equation, Q is equal to MC delta T, and understanding the whole endothermic, exothermic concept, you'll do just fine.